you are doing everything right. You've cut out sugar, said goodbye to junk foods, and stopped ordering takeouts. Now you're focusing on whole foods and preparing healthy meals. But for some reason, the scale just won't budge. A girdle is not a substitute for weight loss, Peter. You start to wonder, why am I not losing weight? What's wrong with me? It turns out there could be many reasons why your weight loss progress is stalled and diet is often the first thing to inspect. Today, we are looking at some of the foods we've been conditioned to think are always healthy regardless of quantity because they might be secretly sabotaging your weight loss. Hello, my dear and welcome. I'm Marina a registered dietitian with a passion for guiding others on their weight loss journeys. Having lost 80 pounds myself, I completely understand the frustration of doing everything right but not seeing results. Uh, the bathroom scale is lying again. So today we'll discuss some of the foods that are considered healthy but could impact your caloric intake. We'll decide whether to keep or toss those foods, and if we keep them, how much to consume. When we talk about healthy food, it's easy to assume that certain foods are automatically good for any health goal. However, just because a food is considered healthy doesn't mean it's always the best choice, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Factors like portion size, caloric density, and the cumulative effects of different foods you eat all play a crucial role in determining if this food supports your goal. The truth is, no single food is inherently healthy or unhealthy, and more importantly, there are no universally good or bad foods. It depends on the quantity and how they fit into your broader diet and goals. Additionally, there's no single food that will cause weight gain or weight loss on its own. Defining what makes a specific food healthy can be a bit tricky. We could say that a healthy food contains vitamins, minerals and fiber, which are nutrients known to be essential for health. However, it is also crucial to ensure adequate protein intake, even though most protein-rich foods lack fiber. Does this make them automatically unhealthy? No, it doesn't. Of course not. This is why it's important to focus on dietary patterns over long term rather than individual foods. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics states that the overall pattern of food eaten is the most critical focus of healthy eating. All foods can fit within this pattern if consumed in moderation with appropriate portion sizes. While we can't label one specific food as healthy or unhealthy, we can define what a healthy dietary pattern is. The World Health Organization recommends a healthy dietary pattern that includes a variety of nutrient-dense foods emphasizing fruit and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins and unsaturated fats while limiting added sugar, salt and saturated and trans fats. But here's a catch. What's the catch? Some of the most nutrient-dense foods are also energy-dense. And when it comes to weight loss, energy deficit is the name of the game. Die, calories, die! The key concept in weight loss is achieving an energy or calorie deficit, which means consuming fewer calories than your body uses. This can be accomplished by reducing your calorie intake, increasing your physical activity, or the best choice, both. Creating an energy deficit causes your body to use its stored energy primarily from body fat to meet its energy or caloric requirements, which results in weight loss over time. However, it's important to maintain a balanced diet, even while in a calorie deficit, to ensure you are still getting sufficient nutrients to support overall health and bodily functions. So we need to include nutrient-dense foods, but also be mindful of their energy content. Explain. 
nutrient density and energy density are important terms to understand when making food choices that support weight loss goals. Nutrient density describes the amount of nutrients you get for the calories consumed, indicating how much protein, fats, vitamins, and other beneficial substances a food contains per unit of energy. The term nutrient-dense foods refers to foods that are rich in these nutrients while being low in less favorable nutrients like saturated fats, added sugar, and sodium. Foods with a high proportion of favorable nutrients relative to their calorie content are typically considered more nutrient-dense, which is why they are often labeled as healthy foods. And it's true. Nutrients like fiber, vitamins, and proteins play crucial roles in maintaining health, and nutrient-dense foods are a foundation for a balanced diet. When pursuing weight loss, the goal is to achieve a balanced diet by including nutrient-dense whole foods. However, it is also important to consider the calorie content of these foods because they can vary in their energy density. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Explain that again! Energy density is defined as the energy content per unit of weight, indicating how many calories are in 100 grams of a given food. It is an important factor which may significantly influence energy intake. Foods with high energy density contain a large number of calories in smaller portions. Most natural foods of plant origin exhibit low energy density with the exception of plant oils and nuts. Further, most of the low energy dense foods are characterized by high water and fiber content relative to high energy dense foods. Another component of food which affects energy density is the fat content, which increases the energy density of a food to a greater extent than either carbohydrates or protein. This is why high energy dense foods tend to be dry and high in fats such as biscuits, chips, candy and butter, whereas lower energy dense foods are usually high in water or fiber like fruits and vegetables. It has been shown that consumption of foods with a high energy density increases energy intake in the contrast to foods with low energy density. It's also worth noting that while high energy dense foods can be enjoyed in moderation, consuming too many of them without consideration for overall calorie intake can lead to weight gain over time. But you already know that. I do. I do. I do as you've limited your intake of those classic high-energy dense foods such as junk food, sweets, salty snacks, and fried foods. Now you're focusing on nutrient-dense foods, however, it's important to remember that just because a food is nutrient-dense doesn't mean it can't also be energy-dense. These concepts aren't mutually exclusive. Calories, 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 calories. Energy-dense foods can contain many beneficial nutrients, so nutrient-dense foods are not always low energy. This means that even if you're eating healthy, nutrient-dense foods, you may not lose weight if these foods are also high in calories, preventing you from achieving a calorie deficit. So, it's important to consider both nutrient and energy density when planning meals in pursuit of weight loss. Now, let's look at some of these foods that are nutrient-dense but also energy-dense. First, let's look at the avocado. Although technically a fruit, avocado is nutritionally considered a source of fat with around 80% of their calories coming from fat. Avocados contain mostly monounsaturated fatty acids, dietary fiber, essential nutrients, water, and phytochemicals. Replacing saturated fats with monounsaturated fats, as found in avocado, is beneficial for heart health. Avocado consumption is associated with improved overall diet quality, better nutrient intake, and a reduced risk of metabolic syndrome. 
However, avocados are also high in calories because of their fat content. Fat has about 9 calories per gram, which is more than double the calorie content of protein and carbohydrates. A 100 gram serving of avocado contains about 160 calories, which means a whole avocado can have around 320 calories. And if you're following a 1,800 calorie diet for weight loss, consuming a whole avocado represents a significant portion of your daily calorie intake. So it's important to be mindful of portion sizes. Food-based dietary guidelines and other organizations typically recommend one to two portion of fats per meal, depending on individual's energy needs. One portion is equivalent to about half a medium-sized avocado or 120 to 160 calories. So, let's say you are making an avocado sandwich with whole grain bread. To limit your calories from fat, add lean protein sources and vegetables and avoid adding extra splash of olive oil or full fat spread or cheese. This portion size and meal structure approach allows you to enjoy the benefits of avocado while managing your calorie intake. Tell me in the comments, do you like avocado? How you use it? Maybe we can get some interesting recipes. Next, we'll go nuts and seeds. Eating nuts or driving us nuts? <laughs> <laughs> These foods have been staple in diets around the world for millennia. They are highly nutrient-dense, rich in unsaturated fats, proteins, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Studies have shown that consuming nuts and seeds can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and respiratory diseases. Current dietary recommendations suggest eating a handful of nuts and seeds per day for those without allergies. Notice anything familiar? Portion size is the key. Nuts and seeds are nutrient-rich, but they are also energy-dense, providing a lot of calories in a small amount. For example, 100 grams of almonds contain about 580 calories, with most of those calories coming from fat. There is some concern that the high-fat, energy-dense content of nuts may promote weight gain, but studies suggest that regular consumption of nuts does not necessarily lead to weight gain. But these studies also indicate that people who regularly consume nuts tend to be mindful of their overall diet and consume moderate portion of nuts as a replacement to other high-sugar, high-fat snacks. For those on a weight loss plan, it's easy to underestimate the calories in nuts and seeds. A proper portion size for nuts is around 25 to 30 grams, equivalent to a small handful. Nuts, by the way, are technically fruits. I don't believe <laughs> Defined as dry, single-seeded fruits with a high oil content. Seeds like flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp seeds offer similar benefits with additional fiber, unsaturated fats, and some protein. However, they also pack a caloric punch. 100 grams of chia seeds has about 490 calories, while 100 grams of flax or hemp seeds can contain 530 to 550 calories. A suitable portion of seeds is about 25 to 30 grams or approximately 2 to 3 tablespoons. When incorporating nuts and seeds into your diet, moderation and portion control are critical for maintaining a calorie deficit. Burn the whole calorie! <laughs> Personally, I am nuts for nuts. She's nuts! What about you guys? Share in the comments. On to the peanut butter. Probably the most popular spread made from ground peanuts known for its rich flavor and creamy texture. It contains some unsaturated fats, fiber and beneficial micronutrients contributing to heart and overall health. However, while peanut butter does contain some protein, it's not necessarily a good source of protein for those seeking to meet their daily protein intake. 
To get about 20 grams of protein from peanut butter, you'd need to consume roughly 600 calories worth, which can be counterproductive if you're trying to lose weight. 14,000 calories later. Peanut butter is highly energy dense with about 100 calories per one tablespoon, which is equivalent to 15 grams, so 100 grams of it has around 600 calories, primarily from fat. This makes it easy to consume a large number of calories without even realizing it. For those on a weight loss plan, it's crucial to enjoy peanut butter in moderation. A recommended serving size is typically 1 to 2 tablespoons, which provides flavors and nutrients without excessive calories. To get the most out of peanut butter while managing calorie intake, choose natural varieties with minimal added sugars or hydrogenated oils and use it sparingly. Like on a whole grain toast, in a protein fruit smoothie or stirring it into yogurts and oatmeal. And not as a solo player. Although, I have to admit, I did have my fair share of one-on-one -on -one moments with my peanut butter, but today we do know better. How about you guys? Can you practice portion control when it comes to peanut butter? Next up, olive oil. Olive oil is a staple in the Mediterranean diet, one of the healthiest dietary patterns known for its benefit to heart health and longevity. It's rich in monounsaturated fats and antioxidants, including oleic acid and polyphenols, which have been linked to reduce inflammation and lower risk of chronic diseases. Plenty of studies have correlated that the consumption of olive oil was associated with better overall health. While olive oil is nutrient-dense, it's also energy-dense, with about 120 calories per tablespoon. This high calorie content can quickly add up, especially if you use olive oil in multiple dishes throughout the day. Whether you're dressing a salad, sautéing vegetables, or drizzling it over a meal, the calories from olive oil can sneak up on you. To ensure you are using olive oil without exceeding your calorie goals, it's important to measure it before adding it to your food. A simple way to do this is to use a measuring spoon to control the amount you use. For instance, if you're adding olive oil to a salad, aim for one tablespoon to limit calorie intake. When cooking, consider using a non-sticky spray or lightly coating the pan to reduce amount of oil needed. By being mindful of portion sizes and measuring your olive oil, you can enjoy its benefits without unintentionally consuming excess calories, helping you stay on track with your weight loss goals. In our house, we are big on olive oil, but we really do measure it, as you can easily add 500 calories of olive oil to your salad, thinking you had a low calorie meal. Low on olive oil, Carmi. Share in the comments how you use your olive oil. We can't forget about cheese. A beloved food enjoyed worldwide offering a variety of flavors, textures and uses. It's a good source of protein, calcium and other nutrients such as phosphorus and vitamin B12 important for bone health and other functions. The nutrients in cheese can vary and so does energy density depending on the fat and water content. Some cheeses can be quite energy dense, particularly full fat varieties like cheddar, parmesan and gouda. A 100 gram serving of cheddar contains about 400 calories. This high caloric density can make it easy to consume more calories than intended, especially if cheese is a regular addition to your meals and snacks. One ounce, which is around 30 grams of hard cheese, about the size of your thumb, contains roughly 120 calories, with a significant portion of those calories coming from fat. So naturally, lower fat cheeses are lower in calories, allowing you to enjoy larger portions without consuming as many calories as you would with full fat cheeses. A reasonable portion size for full fat cheese is around 30 to 40 grams, which is considered one serving of fats in a meal. 
while you can enjoy a modest amount of full fat cheese as a part of a healthy diet, how much of it, it's obviously the key. To regularly enjoy cheese while managing calorie intake, consider using it as a complement to other foods rather than the main focus of a dish. For example, add a small amount of grated cheese to a salad, use thin slices on a sandwich, or include a modest portion on a charcuterie board. Measuring your cheese portions before adding them to meals can help you maintain control over calorie intake. Additionally, choosing lower fat cheese varieties such as Spartsky mozzarella or other reduced fat cheeses can help reduce calorie and fat intake without sacrificing taste. By being mindful of portion sizes and selecting a lower fat option, you can enjoy cheese as a part of a balanced diet without undermining your weight loss goals. And we also enjoy dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is often regarded as a healthier alternative to milk chocolate due to its higher coca content and lower sugar levels. A standard serving size of dark chocolate is typically between 20 and 30 grams, containing about 100 to 150 calories depending on the coca concentration. This serving size generally provides around 7 to 10 grams of fat, with most of it coming from coca butter, a source of saturated and monounsaturated fats. Dark chocolate also contains beneficial antioxidants, known as flavonoids, which have been linked to reduced inflammation and improved heart health. However, because it has a lower sugar content and is considered healthier, some people might think they can eat it in larger quantities without consequences. This assumption can lead to consuming more calories than intended, especially if dark chocolate is added to a diet without accounting for its high energy density. In contrast, milk chocolate typically contains more sugar and less cocoa, leading to fewer antioxidants and higher sugar levels, but the calorie content is about the same. So, the caloric impact of overconsumption remains a concern with both types of chocolate. To enjoy dark chocolate without compromising your weight loss goals, limit your intake to one or two small squares per day and incorporate it into your overall calorie budget. Maybe pair it with other nutrient-dense foods like fruit to enhance the flavor while keeping the calorie count in check. By practicing moderation and tracking your portions, you can enjoy the benefits of dark chocolate without overconsumption. Which one you like better guys, milk or dark chocolate? Well, I don't discriminate. Lastly, we can't forget dried fruit. It can be a convenient and tasty addition to a diet, providing essential nutrients like fiber, vitamins and antioxidants. However, drying fruit removes water, concentrating the sugars and calories, which can lead to an energy-dense snack. This can make it easy to consume a high number of calories without realizing it, especially if you think of dried fruit as the same as fresh fruit. For example, a typical handful of dried fruits such as raisins can contain about 100 to 150 calories. A 100 gram serving of raisin can have up to 300 to 350 calories compared to the same amount of fresh grapes, which is significantly lower in calories, with approximately 60 to 70 calories per 100 grams. This stark difference shows that while dry fruit can be nutrient dense, it is also energy dense, requiring careful portion control. Uh, portion size, pretend you're cooking for six. To enjoy dry fruit without compromising your weight loss goals, limit your portion sizes. A small handful, about 30 grams, is generally considered a reasonable serving size for dried fruit. And rather than eating dried fruit as a standalone snack, consider mixing it with other foods like sprinkling a small amount on oatmeal or Greek yogurt. This way you get the added nutrients without consuming excessive calories. Additionally, watch out for dry fruit with added sugars or coatings, which can further increase calorie content. 
By choosing unsweetened dry fruit and keeping portion sizes in check, you can include it in your diet while still managing your overall calorie intake. And there you have it, my dears. Understanding the difference between nutrient density and energy density is crucial for maintaining a healthy diet, especially when working toward weight loss goals. Foods that are nutrient-dense can be beneficial for overall health, but many of these foods are also energy-dense. To successfully navigate a weight loss plan, focus on moderation and portion control, but ultimately the key to a successful weight loss journey is finding a balanced approach that works for you. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found these insights helpful. And if you have any questions, write them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.